A top Ukrainian military official said Russia has used most of its force. Putin's ICC arrest warrant is justified, Biden says. President Biden said the International Criminal Court was justified in issuing an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin, who has clearly committed war crimes. The ICC on Friday issued warrants for both Putin and Russia's Commissioner for Children's Rights, accusing them of participating in the abduction and deportation of children from Ukraine to Russian-occupied territories. Ukraine is investigating over 16,000 cases of forced removals. Here's the latest on the war and its ripple effects across the globe. Key Developments Putin's arrest warrant is the first the ICC has issued for the head of state of a permanent member of the UN Security Council. While the warrant is unlikely to land Putin or Commissioner Maria Lvova-Bolova in court, it could make it difficult for them to travel to countries that cooperate with the Hague-based tribunal, which includes several of Russia's neighbors. Chinese leader Xi Jinping will visit Moscow next week to meet with Putin and a major show of support for the Kremlin. While Beijing has claimed neutrality between Kiev and Moscow, it has offered diplomatic support for the Kremlin and accused Washington of turning the conflict into a proxy war. The United States said it would oppose any ceasefire proposal that could emerge from talks between the Chinese and Russian leaders. A ceasefire now is, again, effectively the ratification of Russian conquest, White House spokesman John Kirby told reporters Friday, according to the Associated Press. Asked about the visit Friday, Biden said, well, we'll see when that meeting takes place. The United Nations is doing everything possible to make sure that the grain deal brokered between Russia and Ukraine last year can continue. The organization's aid chief told the Security Council on Friday, a day before the agreement was set to expire. The accord has helped ease global food insecurity, particularly in developing countries. Moscow has said it would be willing to extend for 60 days, while Kiev is seeking a 120-day deal. Battleground Updates Senior U.S. and Ukrainian officials held a video call to discuss the battleground situation and U.S. support, Ukrainian officials said Saturday. The White House also confirmed Friday's call, which involved National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin III, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley. The U.S. officials reaffirmed the unwavering support of the United States for Ukraine as defends its sovereignty and territorial integrity, the White House statement said, adding that President Zelensky joined at the end of the call. Russia is likely preparing to widen its military conscription, the British Defense Ministry said Saturday. A bill introduced earlier this month proposes changing the age for serving from 18 to 27 years to 21 to 30, a change the British ministry said was probably intended to ensure that 18 to 21 year olds, who often seek exemptions based on being in higher education, are nonetheless eventually forced to serve. Although conscripts are currently officially barred from serving in Ukraine, extra conscripts will free up a greater proportion of professional soldiers to fight, the ministry added. A group of European Union countries will sign an agreement Monday to buy artillery rounds for Ukraine, Reuters reported, citing an unidentified EU official. The pact aims to quickly provide Ukraine more of the 155mm shells it has said are a vital need as it burns through rounds in a war of attrition. A top Ukrainian military official said Russia has used most of its forces to try to encircle Bakhmut. Ground Forces Commander Kal Jan Oleksandr Sersky wrote in a telegram post Friday that the eastern city remains the epicenter of fighting, but fierce battles continue in Kremina, Torsky, 